This is part one in a two-part revision resource on memory. To use this resource effectively, you will need to have already studied models of memory from the AQAA specification and have a set of detailed notes on researching concepts in this area. As this is an overview resource, you will need to revise the exact details of the procedures, findings and conclusions of studies separately. The specification for your exam states that you need to know about the multistore model, the concepts of encoding capacity and duration, strengths and weaknesses of the multistore model, and you also have to know about the working memory model and its strengths and its weaknesses. We'll start with a potted history of this area of research so you can see how the concepts and research you've studied fit into psychology as a whole. We'll start with the birth of research into memory. Memory research became popular in the 1950s, 60s and 70s when cognitive psychologists turned their attention to investigating how we understand the world around us. This coincided with technological advancements in computing. Cognitive psychologists are not interested in trying to explain memory through neural impulses, brain chemicals or brain structures. Cognitive psychologists have instead attempted to impose a theoretical framework of processes to explain memory. The information processing approach likened the brain to a computer, receiving inputs, making decisions and creating outputs. This is referred to as modelling, as the analogy acts as a model from which to understand something relatively abstract such as memory. The first models focused on passive stores, like filing systems where memory seemed to sit awaiting processing. Later models suggested that memory was active and dynamic, more like a PDA, iPod or Blackberry than a filing cabinet. Psychology is a science, however, so our knowledge of memory does not stop here. Further research and developments lead to more questions, and so the quest to learn more about memory continues. Cutting-edge research at the moment is questioning the idea that memory is localised in the brain, and in fact has suggested it may be distributed about the body. The multi-store model. Atkinson and Schiffer in 1968 proposed this first simple model of memory. They proposed that it comprised of a sensory, short-term and a long-term memory store and that the only way to transfer from short-term to long-term memory was by the process of rehearsal or rote repetition. In the exam you could be asked for more information on each of the memory stores. Sensory memory is a passive store which holds stimulus input for a fraction of a second in an unprocessed form. According to Atkinson and Schifrin there are three stores as part of the sensory memory, the echoic, the iconic and the haptic store. Research has been carried out by Sperling in 1960 into this store. Make sure you check your notes for details of this investigation. Make sure you know the procedures, the findings and conclusions of this particular study. You can probably recall Miller's magic number 7, but you should make sure you know more than this about the capacity of short-term memory. For example, the capacity can be increased if you read the material to be remembered aloud. However, research also showed that anxious people tend to have shorter digit spans. You will need to revise Peterson and Peterson's constant trigram study, which showed that without rehearsal memories fade rapidly. Don't forget that other research showed that intention to recall is important too. When participants are not told they will be asked to recall the information presented, recall is poor even after only 4 seconds. Encoding is the process of transforming the input into a form that can be stored. Look up these studies by Conrad and Badley. Make sure you know what is meant by the term substitution error. Research shows encoding is mainly acoustic in short-term memory, but this may not be the whole story. Some evidence shows we can use visual encoding when the material is suited to this form of storage. Like short-term memory, you will need to know about research into the capacity, duration and encoding methods in long-term memory. It's not possible to quantify the size of long-term memory, but research has investigated the duration of memory, such as Barrick's high school yearbook study, which found that recognition of high school classmates was good after 34 years, but declined by 47 years. This was a natural experiment, unlike the other studies we've considered so far, which are lab experiments. Other research has suggested that long-term memory duration is dependent on the type of material to be remembered, with skills being better retained than facts. Learning something well in the first place has also been associated with longer retention. Encoding in long-term memory has been shown by research to be semantic, although it's likely that we use other codes in long-term memory as well. You will need to be able to criticise research into short-term memory and long-term memory. You could do this by considering the method used by studies. 
Most of the studies in this area are lab experiments, which can be said to lack ecological validity. Barrick's study is a natural experiment and could be considered to be more ecologically valid. Memory studies tend to be criticised if they ask participants to remember artificial material, such as lists of nonsense syllables. Barrick's study, however, when the memories for the classmates' names were real memories, is not artificial at all. Peterson and Peterson's study could be argued to lack internal validity, as they were intending to measure the duration of short-term memory. Critics have suggested that the counting task may have interfered with the amount that could be remembered, and that the reason for the decline in recall was the overload on capacity, rather than the length of time between learning and recall. You could consider the population validity of research. Most memory studies use volunteer samples of students. Don't forget in an exam to explain why this is a problem, rather than just say that it is. Back to the multi-store model. You will need to be able to evaluate this model. Its strengths are that it's testable. Its simplicity means you can actually look for separate stores, and there is evidence of separate stores. This comes from the primacy recency effect, case studies, and neurological evidence from brain scans. Its weaknesses, however, are that it's oversimplified. The case studies suggest that there's more than one type of each store, so memory must be more complex than this model implies. In addition, we don't always rehearse information to get it into our long-term memories. Some things are instantly remembered. And also, if the evidence that the model is based on is flawed, then this causes a problem for the theory. Our second model is the working memory model proposed by Badley and Hitch in 1974. This model sees short-term memory as an active dynamic memory system, made up of a central executive, a phonological loop and a visual spatial sketchpad. The central executive takes a supervisory role, controlling the phonological loop and the visual spatial sketchpad. These two components work on different types of information, so phonological for verbal tasks and visual spatial for visual image based tasks. Each of the components is divided into a rehearsal mechanism and a passive store. The articulatory loop, for example, rehearses verbal information and the phonological store holds on to it. In the visual spatial sketchpad, the inner scribe is the active rehearsal mechanism and the visual cache is the passive store. You will need to make sure you can identify evidence to support the working memory model. These two studies are useful pieces of evidence, both laboratory based, which provide support for the different components of the working memory model. Evidence also comes from more scientific measures such as brain scanning techniques. Look up these studies in your textbook or in your notes and make sure you're clear on how they support the working memory model. Unlike the multi-store model, the working memory model seems to have more strengths than weaknesses. A particular strength is the view of memory as an active dynamic system. The support from controlled lab evidence and case studies and its applications which can be used to understand reading difficulties like dyslexia. The working memory model, however, is not without its weaknesses. One of the key features of the centre executive has been seen as almost impossible to test, and this is a problem for the model. It does a supervisory planning role, which is very abstract. It's very difficult to design a task that actually tests that role. In addition, researchers have also suggested it may not be a complete model in its current form, and that more research is needed. Investigations, for example, have shown that it is possible to do a musical task in short-term memory and a verbal task. According to Badley and Hitch, this should block the phonological loop and mean that it's impossible, but it's not. We have been through the whole of the first topic of memory. We've looked at the origins in cognitive psychology, the key terms of the models, and research in this area. Make sure you revise the key studies that have been identified in this resource.